Hello everyone, Pally Time here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. Today is going to be a big day. In today's video, we are finally pushing forward on the high road out of Act 1. I have never, ever, ever left Act 1 before. I have played this game for three years and have never been able to see what is behind this archway. This is a monumentous occasion. Now, I could have left out of the Underdark, just for the record. We could have taken an elevator out from pretty much the same area where we docked our ship. It was just a few feet away. But it's said that the high road is the more difficult road to follow. Halson warned us about a shadow curse on this road, and I am very curious to see what that is all about Thank you guys so much for being here. If you're still enjoying this series, I encourage you to hit the thumbs up button. It helps out our videos a ton with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're excited for more content, maybe we'll find other people that are equally as excited about it. Now, without any further ado, we are going to make our way into act two. I'm by myself. Oh no, <laughs> oh, everyone's just stacked up together. All right, and break. Good job, guys. We made it through. It's so green. It's so luscious over here. Now, this is right next to the area where we... F Whoa. Right where we fought the Githyanki in the previous episode. Oh, that is stunning. When there's a little camp down here. Okay, so I've mentioned this before. I've kind of felt like I've been a tour guide of Act 1 up until this point in the series. I feel like I've been showing you guys exactly why I love this game and trying to get you involved in our story as much as we can. But now, I don't know what lies ahead anywhere. It's a brave new world out there. Wait. Oh, yes, yeah, right away. Tissu script scratched in the ground. Okay. As I expected. A crash must be nested in the temple below. Yes, we, we found the medallion. What is what is Tirsu script? Yankee writing. Every word a wheel, every letter is spoke. The most powerful texts are engraved in slate. Some so ancient, only the most erudite Gish can read them. Wow. I'm not going to say how do I know I could trust your people. Because that guy was clearly crazy. The Githyanki that was riding the dragon, he had his own agenda. I can't believe that all Githyanki are like that. Although, you know, Lazel was a little rough around the edges. By the way, brought Lazel. I don't know if I mentioned that already. Karlak was pretty beat up after the last fight, and I didn't want to use my short rest. And I also thought Lazel would love to see her people in the temple. Remember, back when we started our campaign, the first person Zin met after waking up on the Nautiloid was Lazel. He couldn't remember any of his past at all. So she's the first friend I made. I really trusted her input, and I want to see that through with uh, getting help with our parasite. So, let's get in there. Very well. I'm down. You may lead. You may lead. Let's do it. too far that our chance is lost, I'll make my way there alone. No, you don't have to do that at all. So we have a waypoint. Can I? It looks like it. I could still go back to act one. They even said, make sure you tie up any loose ends. I was kind of expecting to not be able to return. That's how it was in Divinity. You couldn't come back. This isn't a temple, right? Where do you... Hmm. Hmm. Let's poke around. Some big old wheel. Is that the temple down there? <gasps> this looks like a pulley system. This might be able to take us down there. Wait a minute. Hello, who's there? Hey, we're just passing through. Lady Esther. Ah, a friendly face. Oh, you are a sweet, sweet blessing, my dear. You know, I've had nothing but trouble all day. I've been accosted, chased, insulted. You don't say. Look over there. Do you see that wretched little hive? Um, do I trust this person enough to look over there? The last time someone wanted me to look somewhere, it was a steria, and you put a knife to my throat. It's a, how do I say this? Lathadarian Monastery. Site of pilgrim. Uh, 
How do I say this? It's a Lanthadarian monastery, a site of pilgrimage. How could it be wretched? Oh, I mean no offense to the morning lord. I simply prefer when his monasteries aren't overrun with brutish, stupid, rude gif Yankee. Oh. Brutish and rude by your wretched standards. But stupid. Kachaki. Kachaki? What did I just say? My companion would call it a crash. But it was built on what remained after the Gith Yankee slaughtered all of the monks. Oh but no! A murderous training camp. Oh Keep no! Both counts. Lazelle, I'm a monk. I was doing them a favor, offering to buy one of their eggs. And how am I repaid? Attacked and run off like some transient. You know, my first opinion of her was I thought she was one of, like another hag. Like there were more of them. I believe there was a letter inside of uh, Auntie Ethel's uh, like underground area addressed to her from another hag. So I'm just going to accuse everybody, I guess, until we find one. Why would you want to get Yankee Egg? You kind of passed right over that. The Society of Brilliance asked me to acquire one of their row so they can incubate it and once it hatches, Raise the spawn in their tradition. That's weird. Please, do enlighten me. What is this tradition? The society believes a Gith Yankee raised in a peaceful, natural oh, environment. Oh, egg like that? Overcome its violent nature. Wait. I'm sure your friend would agree. A Gith Yankee is as likely to forsake its violent nature as a gnome is to fly. There's a lot to unpack there. Githyanki are born from eggs? <laughs> oh, violence is taught, not inherited. You need not steal a child to know that. I mean, yeah. I, I agree with that. You've been sipping from the same goblet as the society. Perhaps you'd be willing to help, then, to prove your point. They may have chased me away. But surely the Giths would welcome a person with such sympathetic views to their crash. Well, I certainly hope so. And once inside, you could simply purloin an egg. I've never heard that Steal word in my one life. Of Gith's own. I will slit your throat for even suggesting it. I'm not talking to you. You'll be well compensated, of course. Just bring me an egg. Man, I want payment up front. You think I could pull that off? You know, this is kind of messed up. You're taking the future of the Githyanki away from their parents. Oh, my friend is right. <laughs> this is messed up, but I'm not going to say that. Uh, do you have any equipment worth trading? So. We'll at least take a look at this first. She has the graceful the cloth. Your you gain Cat's Grace and increase your Dexterity score by 2 to a maximum of 20. You gain 1 Dexterity bonus saving throw. And you can increase your jump distance by 5 feet. That's rare clothing. Wait a minute. Wait. Hold the phone. 2,000 gold for that. That is a lot. If we compare that to what I'm wearing now, it's the same AC. However, can I see my character stats right now? Because I'm pretty sure I'm at 18 dexterity, bro. That would bring me up to 20. I'm almost certain I'm at 18 dexterity. I'm glad we took a look at this. Anything else I want here? Your unarmed attacks deal an additional fire damage. <gasps> 2,600 gold, lady. Lady, I'm just going to clear you out. Just give me everything. You were a great first stop here. Oh, my God. I'll do whatever you want. This is fine. You just bought my payment. You want me to steal something? I you got you it. Have places to be. Uh, give me payment up front, though. Oh, that is a hard roll. That's a difficult one. You could be fucking kidding me. <laughs> oh! Yeah, give me that payment up front. I suppose there is a reason I'm asking you to do it. Yes, there is. How much what? are you giving me? Surrender an egg, and I will not stand for it. Very well. Here's the money. Now, I expect a speedy delivery. Wait, that's it? You were only going to give me 268 gold? 
All right, I might forget all about this. I mean, I might be contractually obligated at this point. Maybe I'll just steal it without Lazel seeing it. I mean, I do have an access to an invisibility cloak at the end of the day. Okay, we all failed survival stuff. I don't know about what. I'm going to turn around. Maybe it was just the body here. It looks like we're closing in on the area where the cable car would have ended up. And I'm seeing grass on the path of it. I thought that was a person. Fast travel. Is this the, this is the temple, right? Oh, wait a minute. What's this? Oh, yes. The monastery. Good, good, good. Alternate way in maybe from above. I can make that jump. I'm sure everyone in the party can. Are we going to need to use will to... Wait, can we perceive anything through this? I'm not going to put my camera in there. I don't know. Maybe if we're trying to be on the good side of the, the Githyanki, maybe blasting our way in through a hole in the side of a building isn't the best first impression. I can think of maybe some other way of introducing ourselves that might go a little better. But as the game does it save on its own, maybe I am mistaken. Wait, wait, wait. Hello? Cutscene. That's enough. Uh oh, halfling getting picked on. Looks well, like a few halflings. They caught a herd. If this is about that weapon your friend was talking about, we don't have it, and we don't know shit about it. Is that the absolute that necklace? Move. No. No, no, no. I'm not going in there. I won't. I don't think that's gonna go well. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Gonna have to get that checked out. Anyone want to join her? As I thought. Through the doors. Now. The captain is expecting you. The captain? Mm. Forward. Carefully. These cultists have the crash on high alert. They're already killing people. We can't presume their innocence. Like, I don't know if these people are innocent or not. I am going to make sure I equip our new gear before we head inside. There's, oh, a box we can climb here. This door was locked and it has enchanted security. I don't know what that means, but that makes me think I might want to find another way around. There's also broken glass here that leads maybe to another door we can open. What about this vine? Ooh, I'm kind of liking this entrance. We're up on the roof. That feels stealthy. Easy doors for us to open. A corridor. Oh, we're above the courtyard, right? Oh, one more room over. Uh, okay, a few plaques in here. Very cool design on the floor, and it looks like some of it is targetable. A stained glass window. Can I peer through it to see what's going on down below? The monastery's notable keepers adorn these intricate panels. Lathandarian monasteries oh, of this size were usually overseen by dawn masters, esteemed members of the clergy. Several of the pictured dawn masters remind you of monks who would dedicate their lives to mastering specific weapons of war. Nice. Uh, examine the image marked Dawn Star Seed. The reconsecration of the monastery. Dawn Master Seed. By dawn Master Seed. So he has a hammer and a book. Dawn Master Seed had a hammer and a book. I don't know if that matters. Look at the picture of Dawnmaster Stockhold, so they might all be Dawnmasters. Even song before the Zenith Day, celebrated by Dawnmaster Stockhold. They had a necklace. Stockhold had a necklace. Inspect the broken stained glass Dawnmaster window. Dawnmaster Vasaid wielding. The rest of the inscription and picture has shattered away. Very curious. Now uh, take a look at. Welking glory. Master Welking glory beckons forth to the rising sword. sun in Lathander's name. 
Hmm. I wonder if we can find more glass somewhere. There's some here, but it looks like it was from this broken area. Oh, and it looks like we can climb even further up outside. It's like Assassin's Creed. That might be worth a look. Ooh. How do you wait? How do you have a dirt mound on a stone floor here? Hold on, that one may not be checking out. Inside we find a healing potion as well as a flail and a longbow. I'll probably leave those there for the time being. More knotted roots. Although, hold on, action camera. Do we think this jump could potentially could lead to anywhere? I don't think so. Ooh, big old chest. Opulent chest. Inside another, our second arrow of transportation. An arrow of beast slaying and 129 gold. A scroll of revivify on the other side of an iron gate. Well, let's just see if we can pick the lock on this. I don't think we need any bonuses. <laughs> no. I don't think any lock is ever going to stop us ever again. Oh, by the way, let me take a look at my stats. We had plus two decks. Oh. I was only at 16. I thought my decks was way higher than that. Well, that's okay. We're at 18 now. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. Scroll of Re Revivify. With haste. And I guess I'm going back down. Unless you think maybe there's a way for us to jump here. Ceremonial Longsword. That wasn't in the same room as before, was it? I think it was. I didn't see it. Look at that Ceremonial Longsword. We're going to bring that with us. Don't know if the, the stats on this... Glowing. How odd. The weapon stopped glowing. So if the weapon is placed here, it glows on a pedestal. What if I were to put it on a different pedestal? How the fuck did I deal five damage to myself? Are you kidding me? Did I stab myself with it as I was taking it out of the hilt? That's ridiculous. Pick up the sword. Zen, pick up the, pick up the sword, Zen. Now jump on the thing. We, got, we can't do anything in a civilized manner with you. I'm starting to notice. He did it again? What the fuck? I'm taking 10 damage. It uh, didn't glow this time. So, what the fuck? This has to be an enchanted sword or something. There's no way I just took 15 damage from a regular sword. There's just no way. So that ceremonial sword glowed on that plaque. <gasps> it's because that sword belongs to that person in the stained glass. And when I put it there, I did not take damage. So we need to find a ceremonial hammer, a ceremonial I don't fucking know what this guy's got. And a weapon that's obscured. All right, eyes open, boys. We cracked the code. I do not know your metaphor. An enchanted door with a silver ingot outside. I'll try to pick the lock, but it's enchanted. I, I imagine it's not going to go super well. So let's go ahead and add guidance. We have advantage. The roll comes out with a natty 20, and we open up the enchanted door. Can we go inside? Guardian of Faith. Level seven. I am going to close the door. It's been barricaded. Maybe we leave that one barricaded for a minute. We're actually very close to level six, by the way. We are knocking on that door soon. Another skeleton over here. Just some gold, nothing too crazy. And stairs that go down. Lots of barrels, just wooden barrels underneath. I decided to jump back over. I don't want to commit to exploring that side just yet. I'm going to stick to this side of the castle. Door opens. I'm going to stealth the entire party and get down. Mm. I smell a trap. Oh. Wait, what are these? Gr Grimishkas? There's so fucking many of them. Hey, quick question. What if I just move back into this room and close the door? There are a bunch of little rats. Can they open the door? They're all dashing. Well, I mean, this is okay, I think. We already have aid on most of the party. 
Oh, can I open that door too? Maybe not yet. So is it three sets of three? Oh, there they go. Now they're getting it open. They do seem to be trying to rush us down a little bit. It's been a while since we fought with Lazel. She's currently wielding the Githyanki Greatsword that we got from killing off the Githyanki uh, patrol in Act 1. It does psychic damage, increased psychic damage, because she is Githyanki. So we get that little bonus added in there. I'm thinking about potentially action surging, but I don't quite have enough movement to make it over to the other side here. So I think for her turn, we are just going to jump her over here so she can intercept the incoming rats from the other side. And then our team can figure out what they want to do over here. Uh, Will cannot act. I'm not too sure why. So he's just going to hold his ground. I'm not gonna do any bonus action stuff there. Sacred Flame being cast on. The small rodent to our left, he takes eight damage. That's half of his HP. Zen's then going to pull out the Sword of Screams. 75% chance to hit. It does not connect, but the flurry of blows after. Now remember, this does fire damage. Oh, yes. Well, how much was that? 11 damage on the first hit? Make that 10 damage on the second hit? Zen is officially popping off. With the rest of his movement, he's just going to stand next to Lazel here and they will end their turns. Looks like she can move forward now, so she's going to. We do not connect with our first swing on this rat. We do connect with the second. I want to just close the door again because I thought that would be good, but it looks like we're not able to. We don't have quite enough movement. So she's probably gonna take a good beating here from these rats if they can out roll her AC. It looks like she does get hit for eight damage. That's not the end of the world. Now, she's not like Karlak, where she's going to rage and take half or anything. But I think Lazel will still be just fine. It is now time for the Eldritch Blast to start flying. These two small rats by will get the full force. One getting hit for nine, the other for ten, as they get shot back into the previous room that they just came from. Lazel's going to cast a Sacred Flame on one of the rats and not connect with any damage. I'm just going to close the door, because that's funny to me, and then stand next to Will. Zen, on his turn, is going to approach. The back of one of the rats is facing him. He's going to sneak attack it. That will not need to crit, but we will hit for 20 damage. Then, with a flurry of blows, we connect for seven, followed by eight, leaving one HP on this small critter next to us. Lazel looks over seeing that and attempts to finish off the already wounded creature. That is more than enough damage. And she takes the other one down with no effort as well. She's then going to leap over this debris to be at the other door, just in case those rats do push our back line here. I think our positioning is pretty good. We'll stand right in the middle just for attack of opportunity. Unstable being used. Whoa, wait, they can do this the whole time? What were you waiting on? That little critter transformed into a panther and got all of the HP to go along with it. I'm very glad that we moved Lazel over here. Well, we're gonna take this seriously. We are going to do a wisdom hex onto the panther, follow that up with a double Eldritch Blast, knocking it into the next room. Shadowheart is then going to cast Sacred Flame on the panther, 45% chance to hit. It does for 11 damage. Uh, running pretty low on spell slots, but let's go ahead and use one on Lazel. Just to give her a bit more HP there. That's seven more HP coming back to her. I could potentially action surge, and I don't think I could end this fight. No, I don't think I'm gonna do anything. We're gonna let Zen open this door. He's gonna take a couple steps forward. Crouch down and use his bow for a sneak attack on the panther. Now, is that going to change back into a small rodent? No, it is not. It is done. Swift and then we'll just make our way me. back into the previous room. Now on Lazel's turn, she's going to swing that big sword of hers and connect for not enough damage to kill the rat, which he'll make up for that on the second swing. Those little critters were neat. They kind of look like cats. Maybe like a dog face on a cat body. It's like a Siamese dog cat. We are going to second winds and short rest. We are pretty tapped on spell slots on Shadowheart though. 
Will does have a good amount. He's he's okay. He'll be all right. Poaching of animal speaking recipe over here in the corner. And this looks like a doable jump to get onto the roof. Just saying, if I had a super jump, I think you could do it. Okay, so this is the barricade that I saw outside that I wasn't sure if I wanted to break. It looks like there were a bunch of enemies on the map, and there still are, but those enemies weren't the rats that we were fighting. They were something else. An old key was used to open this door here, an opulent chest tucks into the corner inside the scroll of slow and conjure minor elemental. Bro, wait a minute. What's up here? Hold on. Says path is interrupted. Could uh, Lazel do it? I bet you can. This is just back up to the roof. We were already up here, weren't we? Ancient Githyanki warrior. Maybe we weren't up here. He has a Githyanki slate inside of his inventory. A crush must be close. We already know the crush is close. <gasps> That's a level up. We're level six. This is huge. This is huge. This is huge. Zen finally hitting level six is now a rogue three, monk three. That means I can now pick my rogue subclass. And of course, I am picking the Way of Shadow. This gives me dark vision used. What I can use it once per long rest. The Shadow Art of Silence, which I can cast by using my key points. Shadow Arts of Darkness. I can create darkness in an area. Pass without trace. Call forth a veil of shadows and silence that gives you and all nearby companions a bonus on stealth checks. Shadow Heart also has this as well. But hide from enemies by succeeding in stealth checks. Stick to the dark and avoid enemy sight lines. Attacking or casting a spell will reveal your location. I believe I am able to jump into shadows in some way. At least that's how it's played in the tabletop version. I hope that is still the case. Oh, I'd be so sad if I couldn't. Oh, I just have minor illusion as an action now, too. It's like a cantrip almost. We can use that kind of to distract people in the open world with stealth. Yeah, maybe teleporting into shadows is a future me thing. But I'm becoming more of an assassin. Oh! Piggy witch, what the fuck? What? Wait, wait, w what? I won't give in. You guys are down there? And wait, are you two floors down? What? Time well, I'm gonna end my game. turn. I'm gonna keep leveling up while they figure this out, I guess. I'll see you guys in a minute. Critical miss, wait, one is on the roof? I recognize that vintage. Those kobolds are three sheets to the wind. Three sheets to the wind? What the hell are you talking about? Why is there one kobold on the ceiling that then made every other kobold on the bottom half of the building mad? And why? I have so many questions. Why are they fighting each other down there? The world may never know. The kobold looter didn't loot too much, did he? Well, that... Concludes my turn. Will has Featherfall from his boots. I'm going to use that to then jump. Oh, the camera angle's weird, but I think I could do it. Hold on, let me go action cam. I'm going to jump. Wait, that was his bonus action, so he can't even do it, but I can at least skip a step next turn. God, this is so slow. So oh my goodness. Wait, there's someone in this room. There's actually someone in this room. I'm gonna move up. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna sneak. I'm gonna attack from the shadows. He's a kobold scout. Maybe the other one was a scout too. Maybe, no, he was a looter, wasn't he? Okay, well, they're at least not gonna know where I am for a second. I could theoretically shadow step down there next turn. I don't believe I've used that in this short rest. So that's how I can get down there. 
I think Will on his turn is going to be able to just plummet. Oh, they're all so very close to a fire wine barrel. Oh, if only we had some form of fire we could place there. There's so many next to it. This is ridiculous. All right, Will's going to leap down. Probably not all the way. I think we'll be able to get a few of us down there at the same time. Featherfall lasts for another nine turns as well. So we're setting ourselves up. We almost have everyone here. It doesn't look like there is going to be a climb option. So even casting a scroll of Featherfall at this point, I don't think would be a bad idea. I haven't done an action for Lazel. I have a lot of my scrolls just sitting in one of these bags. I'm sure I have a Featherfall one. I have one Featherfall one. We're going to do it. That'll hit all of us. That'll give us all a way of getting down there next turn. That's the best news so far. In fact, if I can... Wait, they're coming over to see us. Oh, this is wonderful. Wow, I could just start attacking right away. How great. <laughs> Zen is going to drop down just behind the kobolds that are moving forward. He is still invisible for the time being, but he will open up with a sneak attack from stealth. This should be a one shot. That will give him invisibility for the next turn. He's then just going to move further into the room and wait for more of these kobolds to start moving this way. Looks like our... No way. He threw a fireball at his friend. No way. To reveal me? Did his friend know? Oh, and they're all moving into that fire. We know that these guys are going to explode if they die to fire damage. So we may not be that safe. We may not be that safe after all. Shadowheart's going to drop down next. Landing just behind the kobolds here. Mm, I don't think that barrel's in play anymore. Some of these guys have already taken some burning damage. 55% chance to hit. We do not hit with the Sacred Flame. Shadowheart's going to back up a little bit here and just try to clear the way a little bit. Clear some space a little bit. Will landing on the path and now fires off two Eldritch Blasts at the two closest of the Kobolds. Killing both of them, neither of them exploding. I'm going to action surge. I'm going to do that again, hitting the two closest kobolds, both surrounding Zen. They do connect. They do not explode. One of them is not dead yet. We're going to see Lazel jump down from the top now. She runs forward, sword in hand. Oh, no, she doesn't. We're going to use the Githyanki crossbow to connect for seven damage. I was thinking about action surging that. Uh, still may not be a bad idea. She fires off another crossbow shot to the high ground and connects with another kobold. That'll end my turns. Looks like there are four more kobolds in this room that are going to be moving towards us now. I think their goal must have been to surprise us with numbers, try to swarm us, and then spread that fire around. But we had plenty of warning that they were on the way. We were able to adapt to this, no problem. Lazel's going to move in with the Sword of the Githyanki. Ooh, 14 damage on the first swing. She goes in for 19 on the next. She is going to action surge. Follow that up with another swing on the Kobold Looter. And where is the final enemy? They are standing in the next room. She is going to pull out that Githyanki crossbow. 80% chance to hit. It connects for seven damage. With Sacred Flame, we're going to try to hit him as well. 55% chance to connect. It does not. He this saves the time. throw. Uh, let's un... End Will's turn. I don't know why it was ended already anyway. And Eldritch Blast finishes them off. These guys have a lot of loot, and it's all just booze. They just have so much booze. Ceremonial Mace. Oh, shit. We're putting that upstairs. Slurp. Wait, there's... There's more kobolds inside of the wine barrels. That is so funny. Well, I'll take care of that. 
Will's level up is here. Instead of picking fighter, I'm going to continue to level up sorcerer. This is going to give us two sorcery points and some more spell slots to unlock. This gives us a create sorcery points, spend spell slots to gain sorcery points back. The cool thing is, I believe you can sacrifice your warlock sorcery or your warlock spell slots and turn them into sorcery points if we need to. Create spell slot. Gained a spell. What spell are we going to take? Well, you know what? Featherfall would be pretty nice. We don't cast it as a ritual or anything, but I do think we need that for moving around. We just proved how useful it could be. Uh, Will does have the ability to cast it on himself, but this would be an AoE one that we could use for all of our party members. This was what I was envisioning when I was making Will. It has all led up to this point. Increase the range of spells by 50%. Melee spell get a range of 30 feet. A 50% range increase on Eldritch Blast that we are using to snipe enemies from a distance already and provide knockbacks, push people to their death. We can now do it from 50% further away. I am so excited about that. We can also twin spells. Spells that only target one creature can target an additional creature. Will's coming online. We are in. Cleric level six for Shadowheart. See, here's my problem. I don't have as much of a, of a plan for my clerics. I don't know if I'm going to be multi-classing our clerics. I'm going to take Spirit Guardians, level 3 Conjuration spell. That sounds so insanely cool. The spell slot I got is a level 3, so we can use our Necromancy or that new spell more often. Uh, same kind of thing for Lazel here. I don't know if I'm going to be moving out of Fighter with her or not. Fighter seems like such a great class. She is gaining a new feat right now. She already had Savage Attacker. When making weapon attacks, you roll your damage, die twice. Hmm. I think Great Weapon Master would be a phenomenal pickup for her, coupling that with the ability to roll our dice twice for big damage. Great Weapon Master, when you land a critical hat, critical hit or kill a target with a melee weapon attack, you can make another melee weapon attack as a bonus action that turn. Attacks with heavy melee weapons you are proficient with can deal an additional 10 damage, but at the cost of a negative five roll penalty. I've always heard that if you average this out, you will do more damage with Great Weapon Master than without it when you're using two-handed swords. And of course, we're using that great weapon from the Githyanki already cool we'll give it a try if we don't like it we can always respec out of any of these things Positioning. but i think for right now team that's going to wrap it up for today's video i want to see where those githyanki brought those captives i thought we'd be sneaking up on that but that oh you thought you could sneak by me i do have that ceremonial dagger and i ceremonial uh, mace and i know exactly where to bring it so i'm going to uh Bring that back upstairs and make sure that shines bright on its stand. Thank you all for being here. I'll see you again very soon.